Question four with nine marks. There are four optical isomers of ascorbic acid. Only one of those is active. Blah, 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 blah. It is many functions during its acts as an electron donor. It's interesting. Optical isomers are relatively interesting as well. Collagen in the body likes collagen, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the second most common amino acid in collagen is proline. Draw the Zwitter ion for proline. So that means I need a data booklet. Go straight to my data booklet, go to the back page to where my amino acids are. They're in alphabetical order, so therefore P is here, and this is proline. Ooh, so therefore that's that there. What I need to do is copy that across. So if I just put that there, I should be able to draw it here. It's got a pretty hideous looking thing there, but I know that a Zwitter ion has um, both protonated, um, it's called a protonated amine group, amino group, and also it has a deprotonated um, carboxyl. So that's gonna be CO negative. And this nitrogen here, that's gonna be protonated. So it's gonna have one, and two hydrogens, and the positive charge is gonna go on the nitrogen there. So I'm gonna be careful to put that nitrogen there to where this actual bond is here. That should be my, um, my Zwitter ion for that amino acid. I'm just making sure I've got it right. Down, across, up, up, across, C double O negative, and positive. The key thing is with the Zwitter ion, we have to have it neutral, so therefore we only have um, one of these positive, one of these negative, even in case we have other side chains there. That's fine. Next question, describe the role of vitamin C as a coenzyme in the collagen synthesis. Use physical and chemical interactions from vitamin C, so physical and chemical interactions. That means um, changing shape and bonding with the enzyme to explain how the enzyme is catalyzed and production, blah, blah, blah. So, what does a coenzyme do? Coenzyme, what does it do? It goes on and it actually binds to the um, enzyme. So vitamin C binds to the enzyme. So that's my chemical um, interaction, the binding to the enzyme. This changes the shape of the active site to allow the substrate. What is the substrate? Allow, don't know what the substrate is. We're producing collagen, so that's the end product. But anyway, so substrate to bind to it. And what happens afterwards, obviously, vitamin C binds to the enzyme, it changes the shape of the enzyme, which allows the stuff to fit into the active site. And then vitamin C, being a coenzyme, it has to be recreated again. So vitamin C will detach, detach, and be recreated. Um, so therefore that's my three sections, three marks, three sections. Um, probably could discuss the fact that it's an electron donor and the fact that um, at this point here it provides the electrons. So I might also put that there. Um, vitamin C provides the electrons. And what's that? Oil rig. Oxidation is loss and is oxidized. Um, but then will be reduced, because remember it has to be reformed again at the end, reduced um, after being, oh, this is not really well worded, used. So to reform vitamin C and remain unchanged by the reaction. So coenzymes have to be unchanged by the reaction. They can't be used up in the reaction. So that's why we're saying, well, it binds to the enzyme, it then detaches itself. So therefore they're not used up and it remains unchanged. So therefore if it donated the electron to begin with, it then had to receive the electron before the reaction finished. And therefore we have how vitamin C actually worked as a coenzyme. It's a hard one. Next up. 
explain what is meant by the term optical isomer. Optical isomer is about chirality, so therefore um, there are, sorry, 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 we have two molecules with the same um, atoms bonded together, however, have different orientations, orientations in 3D space. So therefore, optical isomers come around chiral molecules, chiral carbons, um, where the atoms are located in different regions in 3D space. So therefore, that's that. I don't like that explanation really. Um, the other area we can talk about is the idea that the mirror image is not superimposable. So I'd say the mirror image is not superimposable. Again, don't love that explanation, but I've kind of got enough in there about optical isomers which work well. Um, explain why L-ascorbic acid is vitamin C, is active as a coenzyme, however the other optical isomers is not. This again is about coenzymes, so enzymes are very specific, and optical isomers have different geometry, different arrangements in 3D space. So what we can say is that um, L-ascorbic acid has the correct orientation of atoms to bind with the enzyme. However, the other isomers do not. That's a two mark question, so we're saying that this one can bind to it, the other ones cannot. Um, I don't love that for two marks, but I think I've got at least two points in there. So I'll move on. Vitamin C can also and act as an antioxidant that is often added to food. Explain why foods containing high proportions of unsaturated fats, so right, this is about oxidative rancidity. Um, antioxidants suggest that as well. All right, so unsaturated fats, what do we know about them? Unsaturated fats contain um, carbon, carbon double bonds. These are more reactive and can undergo undergo oxidative rancidity much easier, for lack of better words. So basically we're saying that unsaturated fats contain carbon to carbon double bonds. These are more reactive and they're going to undergo that. I might just also say that saturated fats, saturated fats do not contain carbon to carbon double bonds. Okay, so therefore the idea is that unsaturated fats undergo um, oxidative rancidity much easier because these carbon to carbon double bonds are easier to attack. Vitamin C um, obviously is an antioxidant because it stops that oxidative rancidity from happening. And that is the answer to that. I think that is the end of that question, which is good.